Okay. So, we were talking about the T cell receptor and the resemblance to the uh, light chain and the variable region of the T of the immunoglobulin. Let us continue our discussion. T cell receptor has one antigen binding site, immunoglobulin has two antigen binding site. Now, one question if I asked you, these two antigen binding sites will they bind to different structural antigens? No, this antigen is going to be of the same type. Actually, one B cell, immunoglobulins come from the B cells, one B cell can produce millions of antigens, sorry, immunoglobulins, all of them can only bind with one pattern of antigen. So, let us say if, let us say this is an antigen and let us say this is also an antigen. So, I have two antigens in my hand, one B cell producing immunoglobulins will only produce immunoglobulins which can combine with this type of antigen and not this. Another B cell may produce immunoglobulins which can connect with this type of antigen and not this. One B cell, now careful here, one B cell cannot produce immunoglobulins which can combine with both of them that is not going to happen. So, please keep that in mind when we talk about immunoglobulin, we will talk about it. Here, this is one immunoglobulin. So, that means a T cell receptor actually does not have the constant region. Instead, the constant region is really a very small short piece which is connected into the cell membrane of the T cell receptor. Secondly, now we are shifting more here, we will keep doing comparisons, but we are moving here. T cell receptor is combined with CD3 complex, CD3 complex. Now, do not forget this one, very important concept. You know that T cells are of two types, multiple types are primarily two, helper and cytotoxic. Helper have gotten CD4 on them, cytotoxic have gotten CD8 on them, but they all have CD3. The CD3 molecule sits next to T cell receptor. So, T cell receptor plus CD3 make a functional unit. Do you know that at one time on the surface of a T cell, how many of such receptors are present? About 30,000. And these receptors keep getting internalized and then recycle back. That is true for all systems, all cells where there are receptors, receptors can be internalized and recycle back to the surface depending upon how the cell wants to have its sensitivity. So, uh, normally about 30,000 receptors are present on the surface of a T cell. Do you know this that CD3 molecule is also responsible to help form T cell receptors? So, in people who have gotten a defect in CD3, these patients also show reduced levels of T cell receptor on their T cells, very important concept. This is where we are now going to tie it with the severe combined immunodeficiency disease. In SCID, one kind of SCID is where CD3 is defective and automatically when CD3 is defective, that causes T cell receptor to be less as well. And honestly, T cell receptor needs CD3 for signal transduction. Once an antibody antigen is attached here, the conformational change in the T cell receptor would make a change to the CD3. CD3 then works to transduce the signal inside the cytoplasm. CD3 works with the Janus kinase, kinase type of transduction. And one very important molecule is ZAP70, which takes part in it. Do you know that folks or the patients who have defective ZAP70 or who have defective Janus kinase also have SCID? So, SCID is severe combined immunodeficiency disease, has many pathological origins. Primarily, you can say that one way of having SCID is that. T cell and B cells are absent. 
that is the reason for se severe combined immunodeficiency disease. Why are these absent? We can talk about them later. Another way, the most common in US is that interleukin 2, which is actually secreted from T cells, helper T cells, interleukin 2 gamma chain of that interleukin is defective. So, interleukin is present, but the gamma chain is defective, interleukin does not do the function which causes the cytotoxic T cells not to be become activated, that is also going to cause SCID. So, SCID has many, many pathogenic, pathogenetic reasons, but here CD3 defect can cause SCID, Janus kinase defect can cause SCID, ZAP70 defect can cause SCID. CD3 defect would cause T cell receptor down regulation or damaged T cell receptors or non functioning T cell receptor. Imagine this, I mean, this is very simple. If there is no T cell CD3, T cell has no way of getting the T cell receptor has no way of getting the signal in the cytoplasm to be able to become to be able to activate the T cell itself. CD3 is the signal transduction mechanism for T cell receptor. So, they both work in combination. All right, now let us continue. The other one very important thing on the T cell is T cell receptor is that T cell receptor this region here, the antigen binding region, antigen binding region is divided into CDR3 region which is the central region of this T cell binding area or antigen binding area. So, this is antigen binding region and it has CDR, CDR 1 and 2 on the peripheries. What are these? These are sequences of polypeptides. What is their function? Now, please do not forget this. The function of CDR 1 and 2 is to combine with MHC 1 or 2. So, that is a very important difference of a T cell receptor from an immunoglobulin. An immunoglobulin molecule can bind with an antigen without the need of MHC. A T cell receptor cannot bind with an antigen without the presence of an MHC. And of course, you know that MHC 1 or 2, I have talked about that in my previous lectures. This what area of the T cell receptor binds with the MHC 1 or 2? That is the area which is produced, the peripheral area of the binding region called CDR 1 and 2. Now, one more thing, this is very, 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 very important. Uh, you may have read or we would cover in later lectures something which is called osmotic hyper sorry somatic hypermutation or affinity maturation, somatic hypermutation, somatic hypermutation or, or affinity maturation. I know that my initial lectures for immunology, I talked about a dendritic cells which sits in a lymph node has a rose in its hand and presents that to the B cells for affinity maturation. We will talk more about that in, in the later lectures, but what that really is that this binding site, when a B cell becomes active and starts making immunoglobulins, it keeps some of those immunoglobulins on its own surface. So, let us say if it is making this immunoglobulin, this Y, it keeps it attached on its surface. The dendritic cells offer antigens to this B cell and B cell keeps trying to connect with them, keeps trying to bind them and every time it binds them, it mutates its variable region structure and it keeps making the grip better and better. That making it better is called affinity maturation. The process of improving the grip, the genetic process of improving the grip is called somatic hypermutation. T cell receptors do not show somatic hypermutation in their variable regions or antigen binding regions. Do you know why? The CDR1 and 2 only need to connect with 
MHC 1 and 2, 1 or 2. MHC molecules, now please do not forget this concept, MHC molecules in our body are of limited kind, they are not uh, millions of types of MHC molecules, only hundreds or even lesser types of MHC molecules. So, this area which binds to MHC molecules does not have to be of diverse types, only 100 types may be. Due to that, the somatic hypermutation is not needed in the area which binds to MHC 1 and 2, very important concept. CDR 3 on the other hand is the area which binds to the antigen itself just like here. So, this area on the T cell receptor on the antigen binding site, this area is responsible to actually bind with the antigen. This area has variability, but once again it does not have variability produced due to somatic hypermutation. We will talk about it as we see how the DNA rearrangements work. This actually gets the DNA rearrangements and creates a variability. So, antigen binding site of a T cell receptor, peripheral areas are CDR 1 and 2, they are going to combine with MHC 1 or 2 and their combination with CDR MHC 1 or 2 does not need hypermutations. The central area is where the antigen binding would occur that does have a lot of diversity and that diversity also does not need this, it would be done by DNA rearrangements. All right, so now one more difference between these two antigen binding sites. The antigen binding site here in the immunoglobulin versus the antigen binding site here on the T cell receptor has a very interesting difference. That difference is this. This antigen binding site on an immunoglobulin can bind with the antigens with the proteins that are folded. So, let us say this is a folded protein and this variable region can actually connect with so let's say this is the vl and this is vh this is the variable region of the heavy chain this is the variable region of the light chain this is the antigen as you can see that antigen is folded and due to that some amino acid sequences here have come in contact with this and some amino acid sequences here have come in contact with this, but then there are other amino acid sequences between these two that are these sequences that have not come in contact. Even then it will be fine, this binding will work. On the other hand for a T cell receptor, when the T cell receptor is present the antigen cannot be folded, antigen has to show a straight sequence of amino acids to be able to connect here. So, you cannot say that if antigen is folded, can this folded antigen connect with these sequences, this will not happen. So, we say that T cell receptor is simpler as compared to immunoglobulin binding site. All right, so now we understand some of the differences and some of the uh, similarities. T cell receptor, the FAB region of immunoglobulin is similar to the T cell receptor. T cell receptor works with in combination with CD3, CD3 acts as a trans signal transducer, it works with Janus kinase and ZAP70 or tyrosine kinase area. The CD3 defect, Janus kinase defect or ZAP70 defect can cause SCID or patients with SCID can show these issues. In SCID the other issue which we can see is uh, interleukin 2 defects. So, this is the recap. Now, let us talk about the formation of the variable regions. So, that would be our last topic here today. Uh, let me just very quickly look at my agenda to see did I miss anything. Uh, yeah, so, I think we are good. Let us just talk about the formation of the variable regions and then our lecture will be done. So, give me one minute and we will be back. <coughs>